Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. Bianca, what kind of subjects you got before I throw people under the bus? You don't even got a notepad tonight. I don't have a notepad <clears throat> tonight. Um, we had a good dinner, though. You had fish tacos. Yeah, we did. It was really good. We had whatever the other stuff was. Brett's trying to steal a phone from you. Which, this one? Oh, yeah, I forgot you need that. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about how different dogs are with different people. How different the dogs are with different people. But I want you to talk about it. You know, I, I we go over that all the time. And that's, Every day. <clears throat> the day we had Charlie, is that his name? The big German Shepherd? Mm-hmm. Charlie came here, what, he's three years old, I think. Mm-hmm. And the young kid owns him. The kid got him when, what did he say, he was 16 or 15 or something. He got him as a puppy and he's raised him. Mm-hmm. And he's done a great job with the dog. Dog's super, super nice, but he pulls on the leash, you know, and he's kind of a little bit dog aggressive on leash, I think. Mm-hmm. And he uh, was kind of a little bit owning the boy around his girlfriend. <clears throat> but I feel the day that dog got here, we didn't argue with him. <clears throat> we didn't try to make him do things. No. We just. Went with the flow for a few days, and then I really started training on him. But that dog will hook up to my leg, and I haven't turned him off leash to do it, but healing. And I can lay his leash on his back and just have the handle in my hand, a six-foot leash, and he'll stay right there. And the fun thing for me is, and we may have video. I don't know if we video him yet or not. I think we did today, actually, around Pinto. Yeah, we but. did, yeah. And watch for her. her name's Charlie, the big German Shepherd, and we'll throw it on her one day, maybe if we like it. We haven't looked at it yet, but but it shows that I feel sometimes, and it's the confidence level in the person handling the dog is why they act so different with different people. And like today, the little kid at the park that had the, what, 40-pound dog that was going to come growling at us? And a little oh, seven-year-old yeah. boy, he just yes. snatched that dog toward him, and it was on he a longer did. leash. He snatched that dog toward him and kept on walking. That dog shut the hell up. And, and the kid him. never <clears throat> looked back. No. He was going somewhere, and he was not worried about what the dog was trying to do. The leash came tight. He snatched on that dog, and away yeah. they went. Yeah. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Now, if I would have been an adult, most likely there would have been arguments or something. So many different. Th- I wish I had it on video because the kid handled the situation impeccably. I mean, he did. It was, it was just perfect. Fun. And an adult would be like, "What are they looking at?" And then they'd stop. Yeah. And then they'd what are you growling at? And they'd they would allow, <laughs> yeah. They'd talk to the dog. They'd, they'd let it touch escalate. The dog. Yeah. Yeah. It would yeah. just escalate. That kid wouldn't. just like, we ain't got time for this. No. I got things to do. He was to marching. Go. Yes. <laughs> and he just snatched his dog back in line and away they went. And, and he saw us. He did. But he's like, I'm going. We're not stopping. And you know, we had four dogs up there today. We had what? Charlie and uh, Rocky and uh-huh. uh, Luna. Yeah. And, and Evan. Evan. Yeah. And it was just like when we got there, I'm going to throw Nancy under the bus a little bit if she's here, but not not really. I mean, we're just getting close to getting under the bus. <laughs> <clears throat> but <clears throat> when we showed up there, I knew the worst dog in the car was mine, Charlie. Yes. Because he's big, he's powerful, and he doesn't do well with other dogs. Right. And we were in a park where there's a lot of people and dogs and people playing throwing footballs and they was playing that other racket court, whatever that stuff is, with the ball that pops every time it hits. Yeah. Uh, I was I was surprised that Charlie or Rocky done so good. Yeah, Rocky was he was a little when bit we first met him. Yeah, but when he got out of the car he was a little bit honored for a minute or three. Well even before mm-hmm. I got out of the car, he flew out of the car and he was like, Oh, we're going to the park <laughs> and I'm gonna go hunt some people to yell at yeah. dogs to yell yes. at and, and I sat in the car and made him get back in twice, two times. And I sat there like, I got time. But you just set him up to win, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. I didn't see what happened when Evan got out because I was at the back of the car. But I'm guessing that 
You know, Evans is different anyway. He's a handful kind of. She is, yeah. If you don't really keep her in line, and then Nancy worked with her all the way up the hill, and she never did really settle in. Other way around. Huh? Nancy worked with Luna on the way up the oh, hill. Oh, Carrie did. Or Suzanne. Suzanne did. Suzanne worked Evan. with Evan. Yeah. And Evan never did really set in. But like you said, different handlers. So we're going to touch on that. Okay. <clears throat> you can get aggravated and lose. Or you can be like, shit, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Like me and you talked the other day about you was working with a dog and another Evan, dog went by. I think. And you, he lost focus and you mm -hmm. got aggravated. Mm -hmm. Ah, damn me. I'm like, cool. I got a chance now to work on my dog. And I think that changes the mindset for training, you know, and I, I can't wait till the day you get there. I mean, you'll just be looking for trouble right. to fix your dog yeah. rather than you don't avoid it. You know, where right. most people at the park, they avoid it. Right. But you don't hunt it down right. like I right. do. I mean, you see me, I'm hunting shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And some people who have really good trained dogs, you know, uh, some people that have really good trained dogs, they avoid us. Yes. They're like, no, we don't want to go around them dogs. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, they don't want to not go around us because our dogs are pulling on a leash. Our dogs aren't pulling on a leash. But majority of the time, their dogs aren't pulling on a leash either right. until they see our dogs. And then yeah. it changes. And not saying always, because up there where we've been going to Sherwood, there's a lot of nice dogs there. There's a lot of nice handlers there, there you know. Yeah. And it's fun to see that because we could walk by dogs and nobody has problems. Mm -hmm. Biggest problem we've had is that little kid, and he corrected that in like half a second. Yeah, that was it the was, worst dog we've seen, and he just made it quick. Yeah, it was done, and they were on their way. But I feel that people, you shouldn't go hunting problem dogs to train on your dog. Right. And I don't go ever, ever hunting problem dogs out in public right. to train on my dogs. We have enough problem dogs in our place. We don't have <laughs> to go. Plenty to go around. Yeah, we don't have to go shopping. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> but the fun thing for us is, is the problem dogs that we have here that we use end up, by the time I leave, being the good dogs that we work with the problem dogs to make the problem dogs better dogs. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it was fun that Rocky was almost the best behaved yes. dog today. Not Charlie was. But yeah, Charlie was. The, just... the three problems. And so, like, with Evan, did you end up with him before we got back to the car? Mm -hmm. And then he got pretty good. He wasn't perfect, but he was really good. No, I had the leash laid <laughs> over her neck, and she was right by yeah. my leg. Yeah. But she's still just honey. She's just like, she's looking right. for trouble. Yeah. Instead of just, I mean, getting like Charlie was. Charlie just like, and Luna did. Yeah. You know, Nancy had Luna, and Luna was being bad, and all the way up the hill. And then I got Luna, and she just hooked up with me, and she's like, no, I'm good. I'm done with this stuff. And then she did it with Nancy or whoever ended up with her. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> she straightened up. And so a lot of times, for us, and we talk about a lot, is people have a problem dog, like uh, little Fenway that came here. I sent her videos of that dog. Well, I think Kay did, of how good he was before she came back so she could see it and put it in her own mind that yeah. he is okay, he's not yeah. broke, yeah. before she got here. Because when you have a dog down on her, it's hard to... Just snap your mind in that he's going to be good now. And get rid of the images of him, him being bad. Yes. It's hard for me with Scout to delete all that old <clears throat> footage in your mind. Yeah, and replace it with good stuff, you know. And I mean, now we get more and more problem dogs every day. And I mean, that I like. I mean, I get really bored with mm -hmm. stuff that's really good. But I feel there's so many trainers all over the United States sometimes people try to step on one another's toes and talk shit about one another. Uh, when it's not even necessary. No. There's enough dogs for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And if you treat train, that's not my thing, but if it's right. your thing, that's fine. Right. <clears throat> you know, if you use bananas to train, I don't care. I care less yeah. what you use. Yeah. But, you know, when I started Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher, my goal was to be able to go help trainers and mm -hmm. teach trainers. And in the cow dog world, I've done that a little bit, you know. But in the obedience world, it's almost like everybody knows everything. They don't need to know no more. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm the only one around I know that still craves learning. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I get an opportunity to go to some great trainer's clinic or something, I'm going to go. 
I still like to go learn and watch them. I mean, I watch them on TV all the time and, well, on a cell phone. But I watch videos and stuff of them just because I want to get better and better and better. And the Charlie dog today, the boy asked about him going home early, and we both said no at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because that dog's doing so good, people assume they're fixed, and right. they're not fixed, right. you know. I mean, and I feel I go back to a lot of times with the dog training. It's like, you know, an alcoholic or a druggie. When they get out of if they go into a program, which mm-hmm. these dogs are here. Yep. When they get out of it, they're not fixed. You know, you got to try to keep them. Like I told the people with Chloe, I think it was today. Keep him away from the real bad stuff until you concreted what you have. And they, and they know, will. They will, and they mm-hmm. don't have to go hide no more. I Correct. mean, they just yeah. take off, go yeah. for a walk. They and, just avoid problems. Yeah, Boo Boo's the same way, you know. Yeah. And the Hank dog today, <clears throat> that dog went home today, and uh, I told them, don't just dive out in the middle of trouble, yeah. you know, because yeah. if you do, you will get trouble. Yeah. I mean, go out there and work with your dog and have fun with your dog, but... Set him up to win. Mm-hmm. Don't go out there and look for the baddest dogs on the end of a leash you can find. Yeah. So, but the difference, like you were talking earlier, with different people handling the same dog, mm-hmm. it's huge. And sometimes it's it's even further to say that the same person can handle the same dog. And, like, I don't know what day it was that I handled Evan, the Australian Shepherd, I was aggravated that day. And there were so many, it was like, I ate unhealthy. I didn't get (laughs) exercise the night before. I probably didn't sleep good because I ate sugar. And I was in overall not the best mood and then was not patient when I was training. And you called me out on it right away. Yeah, you got all pissy at me. Of course, that's normal. (laughs) What's new? But you know, for me. But then today I handled the same dog and she was almost perfect in town. And I was in a great mood. I was okay with being picked on today, but it was like I was just irritable and didn't want to be picked on the other day. And the and you dog notice I chose really cut it. You slack then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Are we saying that because we're on Facebook Live, or yeah. is that sarcasm? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I don't no. want you to cut me slack no, because no. you chewed me I, out I, nicely no. the other day, ish, and. I, well, I didn't chew you out. Well, I just no. made a comment. Yeah. Well, no. In the car, I got two lectures. Oh, well. <laughs> but, but you probably needed three, so I was nice. <laughs> I needed two. <laughs> but I feel like today I am, what do you call it, reaping the rewards of those you are, lectures. You are, and that's what I told you today at Sherwood. Every time you get one of those moods. Once a week. <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> But then the next day is like you're like, should I learn something yesterday? Yeah, yeah. And that, and I'm a better person for the dog I'm working with. And the dog's cooler too. Yes. You know. And <clears throat> here a while back we had somebody comment about our volunteers hound with dogs. We love for our volunteers hound dogs. Mm-hmm. Our girls in the kennels hound dogs. We can get Josh on hound some dogs. And because <laughs> it makes them a better dog. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because more people are handling them. If the owners handled the dogs like you and I do, they wouldn't be here. Right. So I feel that it is a fact that it makes them better dogs because people who are not everyday trainers, you know. And the fun thing for me is, that like Nancy, she volunteers here. And she probably handled dogs for 30, 40 years. Yeah, yep. And so, I don't know. I think it's just good for these dogs to be handled by different people because then... If they make a mistake, we can fix the mistake, and then it fixes the mistake. It's closer to fixing the mistake for the owner. Yep. And we just, every time we handle them, we try to handle them this, as close as to perfect as we can get and <clears throat> get them to be good. So it is fun to to see different people handle the dogs. And then like Walter yesterday, we took him up there to Sherwood, and he done good. He still pulled on the leash, but he only had one or two little bitty... I don't know. Thanks. Thoughts about melting down, but he never did melt down. And we talk about that a lot too, because like Walter isn't wasn't walking on a leash as good as Charlie did today. But Charlie didn't come in as a lunger yeah. dog reactive. Well, Little I don't know that he wasn't. Yeah, he kind of did, but not like Walter dug holes in the ground <laughs> to try and get to other dogs. Same thing with Rocky. <clears throat> yes. And Rocky wasn't just. 
he didn't just go home from board and train. He came back for boarding. Yes. And so and he kind of gets a little tune up. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing for me, you know, we tell people we don't board very many dogs, but when we do, they got a mind. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to let them just be turds. Yeah. Now, if somebody takes your dog home, he's home three or four months and they haven't made him mind, I don't know if we'd even let him board Right. Or not. We do have some we protocols for that. Yeah. We don't yeah. need to train on dogs that are not being kept up with. But for me, the dogs that we see that come back, they're pretty cool. They are. Yeah. Once in yep. a while, somebody will send us one back for a week or refreshers, you know. Uh, Mushroom, Motsy. We haven't seen that dog for a while. No, we haven't. And he, last time he came here, he was here for a week or so. They went to Hawaii or somewhere, and we trained on him while he was yeah. here. And then, but we haven't seen him since then. But That's what I was going to say about Walter, though. Walter was so bad when he came here, and we only had him for 21 days. He was so much better. And somebody commented the other day asking, do we think the dog will do good when we pass it back to the owners? A lot of times we like to test that, like we did in town. Sure. But we are so happy when the dogs are... 10 times better when they leave here and we tell the owners you got to keep up with the work yes and we talked about frodo and sabrina and we weren't even sure how she would do when she first came to us with that dog but she is dedicated but she was because that was her daughter's dog kind yeah. of, and then her yeah. husband and she was the bottom yeah. of the totem pole and yeah she stepped up and becomes she a leader. I mean, and now she can do way more with that yeah. dog than she could when we met her. i don't even know what the limit is she just sends pictures on the beach with yeah. Her or something yeah when we met him, she couldn't have went to the beach. Well, out, when I met the dog, I couldn't even handle it yeah. yet. It was so growly if you got near its kennel. Now yeah. people come up and pet it at the beach. Yeah. So that's it, crazy. It is, and that's just, <clears throat> for me, it's dedication from it the is. owner. I yeah. mean, we can only yeah. do so much. And, yeah. You know, people talk about pinch collars and uh, prone collars and electric collars and slip leashes and harnesses and different things. I've never trained a dog with a harness. I'm sure you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've trained horses with them to pull wagons and carts and logs and whatever. But <clears throat> with a dog, I'd rather get closer to his mind, which is up there around his head somewhere. I think not his ass. But <laughs> I feel that if you're using a pinch collar or a prong collar on an aggressive dog on the end of a leash dragging you, you're not winning. For sure. Yeah. You somehow had to get slack in the leash. And like yeah. I showed today, the guy today at the little pit bull, she, first she was playing, having fun with one of the dogs through the gate at the Sally right. Port. And then she got a little bit growly because they kept the leash tight with a pinch collar. Yeah. And he just slapped her on the butt with that leash, not even the end of it, just a little bit. And she just quit, came yep. back over and sat down by his feet. She's like, yep. I'm good now. Yeah. But it's because he just broke the concentration. Yep. It's not about yep. beating your dog or kicking your dog or hitting your dog. It's just about touching them. I don't touch them with my hands like some people do. I'd rather use my leash or my toe or something just because if they bite, they don't get my fingers. And we have enough of them that would bite. Yeah, I yeah. need my fingers to eat and stuff, so <laughs> <clears throat> train dogs. So, Brett, we got any questions tonight? Yes, we do. Uh, we have Michael Poole. He says, hola. Hi, Michael. Hey, Mike. Uh, Rocky Pouch says, or sorry, Jessica, Jessica Pouch says, Rocky has been so tired since I picked him up today. <laughs> I bet he had lots of fun. He did. He did. Uh, Amanda Lynn Bliss says, my friend's dog is having diarrhea from Science Diet and Purina. She tried Costco brand dog food, still diarrhea. She's very frustrated. Vet said the dog has tender digestion. Thoughts, boss? Well, he's got thoughts. <laughs> they get me in trouble. <clears throat> you know, we go through that here quite often, and a lot of times it's nerves. Yeah. Because the dogs yeah. come here, and they're used to sleeping on the couch and in the bed. And I'm going to throw this out here. I mean, it's up to whoever, but, like, I don't know. I feed black gold. You mm -hmm. do too now. A lot of everybody about just about everybody here that works here now feeds black gold. Mm -hmm. The black bag they have several other kinds, but sometimes people switch the dog foods too much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like here, the dogs get nervous for whatever reason. You know, they can hear a gunshot or a tire blow out on a car, or a tractor bucket fall on the road and make a noise, or neighbors. A new dog with, comes yeah. in that sounds different. Neighbors play too much music, or yeah. I don't know. But like us now, we get what pumpkin or something. 
pumpkin is good. Some pumpkin to them to try to get their stomach settled. But sometimes we change dog food too much, you know. And I mean, the vets told me at one point that it's like, you know, how if you're allergic to a food, food as a human, you know, you're allergic. It's like an instant reaction. For the dog foods, you can feed it to them for months before you realize that something's not sitting right. So if you change it every week, it's really hard. It is really hard. Yeah. And I fed, like I said, I fed the black gold for 10 or 15 Mm -hmm. years, and I've never had no trouble with it. But if my dogs get a loose stool, it doesn't bother me. new vet vitamins. I do. I feed new vet vitamins. Which supplements a lot of good. Yeah, it's got a lot of good vitamin stuff in it. And we've been a dealer for them for, I don't know, two or three years now or whatever. And all of our dogs get it. And, I mean, we buy that stuff 10, 15 bottles a time, but I think half of it are used on our own dogs. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I don't know. You know, what breed of dog is it, Brett? Mm, doesn't say what type. What breed of Amanda, dog Amanda, what it? kind of dog? Yeah. You got any more questions, Brett? Yes, I do. Uh, we had oh, Michael Poole comments on there and said canned mackerel. Uh, then we got Carrie. She said, I'm excited to start coming to the walk, Adobe, and I need help doing better. We're excited. I don't mind seeing you once well. And B's help. Brian Love says, Hi, Marvin from Cancun, Mexico. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, have fun, Brian. <laughs> uh, Susie Wright says, Hey, Marvin, if I have two dogs and I want to do the group or private training with you, do I bring both at the same time or one at a time? We prefer one at a time. But... Even if you do a back to back session, we like to work individually with we each We do, but dog. the bad thing I've noticed about the back to back, bring both of your dogs, is, is people leave one dog in the car. And they can't concentrate doing the lesson with the other dog because they're afraid the dog in the car is eating the seats, eating the steering wheel. Yeah, bring a crate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to contain one. And you can do them both back to back, depending on where you live. I mean, if you live right here close, I'd bring one at a time. But that's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it's easier to get into, you know, because you got 45 versus two hours or an hour and a half or whatever. But for sure, you know, get hold of Jocelyn in the office and try to set something up. And then Amanda commented, and she says, Worm, worm Rider? Worm, worm Rider. Worm Rider. Oh, worm yeah. Rider. Yeah. And then said, uh, okay, guys, thank you both. I'll fill, fill her in. Hugs to you both. Thank you. Thanks. Brad, any more questions? Uh, Michael Poole commented again, said, canned mackerel to supplement dog food will clear up diarrhea in a day or two. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, we're not going to go buy none today. Put it in the refrigerator or wherever it needs to be. I already so. ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> so, for me, you got anything, Brett? Nope, that's it. Okay. So, I'm what, you know, I don't know. There for a while, <laughs> Bianca, thank you for going out again. <clears throat> we're not. There for a while, we had a few trainers that followed us. Uh, and I don't know what happened to the dude down in Huntsville. Uh, I want to go down there and meet him sometime. He's trained cow dogs forever. Uh, I'll think his name in a minute. Then, like, Seth Allen got on here, Scott mm-hmm. Allison, a bunch of the guys. And for me, they're all cow dog type trainers, and they're not, like, teach a fluffy to set and stay and be good. You know, they teach them to down most of the cow dog guys. Some of them teach them to stand still, but... <clears throat> I go back, and I'm going to throw this out there for everybody. I like to sit out there once in a while. If your dog comes to you every time you call it, and he stays with you, your feet, without touching him, until you release him, you'd be amazed what kind of dog you have. Mm-hmm. And I feel when I started training my first dog in, in 1993, I think it was, that was my main thing. That pot liquor, if I called him, he had to come to my feet and he had to stay with my feet. And if I set him and stay, he had to stay. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> that's kind of been my guideline since I started. Now, you throw in, you can't pull me on a leash. If he stays with my feet, he can't pull my leash unless I have a six inch leash. Mm-hmm. So I think that sometimes people skip those few things. And I feel that, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of think maybe, and I might be wrong, but I think there's trainers out there that don't focus on recall. 
Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that don't focus on recall mm-hmm. because a lot of times people assume you can't have recall. Mm-hmm. 100%. Now, we get people here all the time, my dog called me. Every time I call him, I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah. Except, you know, if there's a cat or a bird or another dog or a mm-hmm. human or horse or a cow or a chicken or a goat, that's not coming to me. My, I don't care. I mean, if I call my dog, they got to come to me. And <clears throat> one of the books I'm reading now, that they, they talk about when did it change. I feel that if you teach your dog, no, probably your kid too. No means no. No exceptions. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of difference. If my dog's growling at somebody, no. Shit better quit. Mm-hmm. My dog jumping on me, no. Better quit. If he tries to get on the couch, no. Try to get on the table, no. If you just start putting that word out there to where it means something. Right. And <clears throat> for me, at is wrong and good is right. It just makes life so much easier on a dog. We've got things so complicated. It's like... No, Fluffy, you can't get on the bed tonight. It's Wednesday, and I got to watch TV, and I want to lay on there ain't enough room for both of us, mm-hmm. you know? And then, I don't know, when you come home from work, it's okay for Fluffy to jump on you for 10 minutes and do cartwheels because he's excited. Mm-hmm. It's not okay, people. It's not okay. I think that sometimes you need to stop before you go in the house, get your little Fluffy dog out of the backseat of your car that you got Walmart and love on it for a little while, and then... Put it back in the car so the one in the house don't get upset. And then you go in the house, take a deep breath, and make your dog behave before you touch them. Yeah. So we're going to try to do a video on leash work again, mm-hmm. entering and exiting a house. And I'm excited about this one. This is one of the more exciting ones. And we just got to get the right dog because it's hard to get the real honorary dogs unless they just got here. Like, we got a new dog in today. Uh, Oscar. Oscar. We'll see how he does. And tomorrow, if he, we'll see if he'll try to drag us around. And uh, he didn't, me, but we done a consultation with him recently. And out in front of the barn today, I got him. He doesn't really good with me. I got him out of the car for a lady. And he just, he behaved the whole time. Behaved all the way in the barn. And then I think I hadn't even leashed somebody, and I seen him drag him off. Mm-hmm. So... <clears throat> it's probably because he's in the barn. He wanted to go say hi to all his buddies or something. But we're going to try to do some lease videos on how to enter and exit a house. We're going to try. We got the video of uh, Aster and what's his name in their house. Yes, Jack. Yep. We'll try to cut and edit and delete a little bit of that video and see if we can make a good entry to a yep. house video out of yep. it. Because I know we videoed quite a bit, but well, and then. Uh, we were going to do one with Suzanne at her house. Yes, with Bodie. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd like to do one with Rocco. Well, I mean, we're and we can bring Roxy and Mari and show a couple things in the house. Suzanne it's said a, we could use her house. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that ain't that nice. She must not know my dogs. <laughs> Hold question here if you're ready. Who? Got question. A question. Oh, yeah. James Roberts says, I have crazy, lovable... Uh, I have crazy level dog. His part off sea and part pit, or so I was told. He lives to run off. He loves to run <laughs> off and travel through the neighborhood. What type of training do we need? Well, for me, I just come back with the foundation. The e collar trains what I do, and if that's the biggest thing, you know, we had a dog out here. That the biggest thing was the other day was what well, was it? It ran off. And then we got talking about it, and then it kind of owns a kid, and it yeah. wants to kill some goats, and yeah. yeah, it won't get off the couch, and yeah. it sleeps on the couch, and it's really yeah. fond of one of the kids more than the other kids, and so and I think it can't sit still. Yeah, it can't shut up either. Yeah, uh, and so sometimes that is. I mean, I don't know. Yesterday, a guy told me if my dog will not drag me on a leash or my wife, and it will come to us when we call it, and. Uh, what was that? It was set and stay, I think. He said, I'm good. I'm like, well, it'll yep. do, it'll do yep. all that, plus yep. a lot more. I mean, but yep. <clears throat> the thing is, for me, <clears throat> I don't know how people have, and I know they do, because you do. You did. Don't know, but you had such a lovable dog. You loved him so much, and yada, yada, yada. 
but the, the turd wanted to bite other people and other dogs if it got close to you. <laughs> but you still loved them to death. Yeah. You know, and it's just like loving a headache. It's just that don't make sense. Yeah. But the fun thing is for me is you as well as I don't know how many hundreds of other people now through our program has fixed it. Yeah. And so, you know, you never weakened. You got aggravated, of course, everybody does, mm -hmm. but you never weakened from the thought that you could fix him. Mm -hmm. And I think your thought you could fix him was because you talked to me and you see my dogs and what mm -hmm. I've done with them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's what I tell a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, go to different trainers and check everybody out. And I throw it out there that, hey, just take your dogs out through the woods and down on the beach and turn them loose and through the forest and stuff and buy the chickens and the cows and see if your dogs will stay with you. Mine will. Yours will. Yep. So, and we got a lot of other clients and customers that will, too. <clears throat> and they don't have to put them on a leash and get drugged through the park, you know. Uh and we do e-collar train. We do, I mean, 99.9% .9 of dogs come through here end up being e-collar trained because yeah. the people see our dogs and they go hang out in the woods with us and yeah. they see us going to the beach and on the trails and different things with our dogs. And it makes a lot of difference. And, and the confidence level's there, you know. I put e-collar on Bear today. He's so excited because he knew we were going to go work yeah, cows. Yeah. And he only got to work for a minute or two. And it is so used. different the way you train because the dogs really get excited about the e-collars. They do. Because we don't put them on them just to tell them they're bad. Yeah. We put them on them and go do stuff. And we don't put stuff. them on to shock them. I mean, right. who was it? Somebody had their e-collar on today and they're like, oh, no, yesterday in a lesson. I'm like, hey, can I use a controller? Yeah, we'll have to turn collar on. I'm like, you don't have the collar on? No, I didn't learn how to use it yet. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. That's where let's start. <laughs> but Because we didn't need it for that dog. No, we didn't need yeah. it. But the thing was, well, he didn't need it. But his biggest thing was, you know what he uses the collar for? What? To hold his front collar closer to the Oh, ear. that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so it worked. It was an e-collar or a prong collar holder for him. <laughs> and... We put the e-collar on. We had his dog healing on leash, off leash, you know. We went That's out awesome. walked by the sawmill and stuff, off leash, waiting like run around. Awesome. And boo. And it was fun. It was fun to see how excited he was. And, I mean, there's nobody more dedicated than that. No, guy. he is I mean, if everybody was it. that dedicated, it would, I be, know. it would be fun. So, right, you got anything? Well, did you answer the question of what you suggest for the type of training? Recall needs? training. Yeah, recall. I mean, yeah. and that's the thing. Get a hold of Josh. If you live around here, get a hold of Josh from... You know, if not, you can watch some of our videos. I don't know where you live, or we might come to a clinic there. I don't know. I won't go to Maine if anybody's there. I, I think we're going to have to promote Ohio in uh, June. And then you got DC says, I used to take my dogs to a remote area, and if they didn't stay within eyesight, I played hide-and-go-seek from them. When they turn around, not see me, they'd come looking. It works pretty good. It does, yeah. I uh, I've, I'd try that, but if they seen a cow, I'd be out of dogs. <laughs> I mean, that's just. I think you know all those things work in different ways. You know, we and, talk about the people that go to shampoo and they have their ball, and yes. you can tell the ball is like the goblet of get my dog to stay with me, yes. and they can't lose the ball because that's how they get their dog to stay with them. But I think that, you know, the thing they were talking about, hiding from your dog, we do that, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I try to teach people not hiding from your dog, but to back up from your dog so yeah. it draws your dog yeah. onto you. And we yeah. do that stuff all the time. But So much better than chasing them. Yes. And, yeah. and, and the bad thing about a dog is a lot of times they'll stop that foot, two foot from you, and you take that step or two, and then it's three foot, four foot, and then it's a game. But I also want to say, <clears throat> if you have a dog that when you sneak off, it looks for you, You've done something right because not everybody that comes here has a dog that. Well, a lot I mean, of some dogs, of them would leave. Yeah, they won't, they're not looking for him. That's why with Hank yesterday, they were amazed that he stayed there and ran off. Yeah. And of course, we're in five acres of fenced woods, so he couldn't right. get away. But, he could run but they think away. they can. I yes. mean, if we would have went up there with that husky, the first or second lesson, band aid, it yeah. would have left. Have you heard from him? No, or? we should check on it. Yeah. Make sure they're okay. Make sure they're not in the hospital getting so good. You got anything, Brett? Yeah, I've got a couple comments. Kay Finley says, I have several shelter dogs that like to be the leaders, pulling on the leash and darting through the door. Okay, we should use one for video. Yeah. We'll get with you. You can bring us one up for a few minutes here as soon as we get rid of a couple dogs. <laughs> I'm kind of full right now, but here in the next few days, we'll be good.
Uh, James, <coughs> James Roberts said, awesome, I'm close by in Amity. Oh, Thank nice. Guys. Oh, awesome. Uh, Donna Marie Kennedy says, come to Bend. Hey, Donna, you set me up a clinic over there. I'll dang sure come. Yeah. Hey, we've got a new thing, Kay, or, uh, Donna, that we're doing for the clinics. And anybody on here, if you got a, a place you'd like to set a clinic up, you know, let us know because we've been doing a one-day clinic. It's an hour in the morning, an hour break to talk about it. A clinic for an hour, an hour break to eat lunch and talk about it some more. And then we do two hours in uh, at afternoon, like at 1 o'clock or whatever it is. And then we bust out of there. But, you know, we've done one of those over in class to nine or two of them. Two of them now. Two of them. Mm -hmm. And some of the people's dogs, we had recalls on them. I mean, we fixed a lot of problems in that four-hour period. And mm -hmm. we, before, I would do those four hours in four weeks, one hour a week. But we quit because it's just not, I don't think it's fair to us for the way I train and fair to the dogs the way I train. Yeah. So we changed it to a one-day deal. I've seen that it works good, you know, I mean, <clears throat> and I've done the same thing, Cowboy Clinic, and, you know, down in Mississippi and up in Washington and stuff, and here in Oregon a lot of times, and we do the clinics all day. Uh, that's a lot for these, and all my clinics, I've always kept low numbers. Uh -huh. Even my cow dog clinics, some dog, some clinics, they'll have 20, 25, 30 dogs in them, and when I done the cow dog clinics, I usually had it six or eight dogs, and that's that's all I'd let in, just for the time factor for me. Uh, but yes, Don, if you'd like to try to set a clinic up, you can get a hold of us, and we'll make sure to try to set one up. Don had just messaged and said, "Let's do it." Yeah, you got a place? We'll try to get one set up, Don. It'd be fun. Uh, Rochelle says, "I mess with Chevy sometimes and hide behind the trees at the park." <laughs> it is fun, you know. For me, I think you always should be able to. Well, even you, I don't. I can't even imagine you could hide from Scout. No, and he couldn't find. I him. accidentally did the other day, and he went and hunted yeah. for me. So. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He was losing his mind because mommy <laughs> ran away, and <clears throat> he went with the wrong group of people first. And then he turned and went to you, yeah. and he found you. And I was in a totally different pasture. Yeah, so it's pretty fun to see that difference in them. And, and a guy showed me that years ago. You know, you take a hot dog on a string, mm -hmm. you give the dog a bite of it, and then you have somebody to keep your dog. And you just drag that hot dog on the oh, ground. interesting. And then you wait wherever you're at, and then when a dog gets there, you get him by the hot dog. Huh. And they'll come track you down, and That's they'll fun. start scenting you. Yeah. You know, I taught yeah. a dog to open gates up here. I think I told you one time because yes. the way I have my dogs, back then I just had my dogs and a few training cow dogs, but I'd have 10, 15 dogs, and I'd let them out in this playground I had, and I had the gate so it would swing itself shut so they couldn't get back in. And then sometimes it would swing shut before it's supposed to. Or I would send out the dogs and I'd be like, I don't remember the dog's name now, but I'd tell her to open the gate and she'd jump up and push the gate open. They'd all be gone, the gate shut, and they'd be in the playground. <laughs> <clears throat> and she would do it. I mean, I didn't even have to go out there. I'd just tell her to open the gate and she went and jumped on the gate and opened it and away they went. And so when it comes to training on these dogs, like I said, the sky's the limit. But the biggest problem people have is attitude yep. and confidence. I can be pissed off at whatever, you know, and I can go grab me a dog out of the kennel and it's gone. I'm good right there. Yeah. Now, I might be pissed off yeah. again when I put the dog back up, but I'm not what I'm training my dog. Now, yeah. I get aggravated at some, you know, like everybody does. But, but not at the dog. <clears throat> no, I get aggravated yeah. at myself because I'm not communicating in a way my dog yeah. can understand me. And most of these dogs, I mean, <clears throat> that dog today up there, Charlie, I think the kids were amazed the way that dog hooked up to my leg, and he wrap his head around my leg and stayed. And yeah. Luna does yep. too. Luna does. And too. they just hook with me, and I could turn left or right and not have to negotiate. I mean, yeah. because they would kind of be in the right spot to for me to be able to turn. So it was fun, and that dog's only been there like a week. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. So Brett, you got anything? Oh, this is All right, fun. Bianca, what do you got? I said I'm That's thinking of throwing got. people under the bus, but I'm trying to hold off. I know you've been holding it in. Suzanne's on here watching us. I haven't <clears> seen Suzanne yet. She's going to be on here. She said she's going to check in on me, see if I'm throwing her under the bus. I think she's going to try to defend herself, but she knows she can't. So, <clears throat> let's see. I'm not going to throw nobody under the bus yet. I'm going to still be nice. But, let's say you're sitting in my horse barn. Okay? Mm-hmm against the gates going into the dog kennels, right? 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're sitting in your chair, relaxed, and your dog is with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's laying on the floor. <clears throat> Somebody walks to the front of the barn. Somebody mm -hmm. pulls up mm -hmm. in the driveway. What you sh what should your dog do? Nothing. Maybe bark once. Mm -hmm. Just let you know he heard gravel. This would be acceptable. What then? What would you do then? If he barks, good, quiet. Yeah. And then, when they walked into your barn, what would happen? What would he do? What should he do? Stay where he is. So what would you do if he got up? What? And then what would he do? Get back to where he was. So if you done that, uh -huh. should you have problems with your dog? No. And do you know why? Because it was simple. Because you're being a leader? Yeah. You have taught him, evidently, to do that. Yeah. So <clears throat> now... To avoid throwing people under the bus, <laughs> what would you do if, let's say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, your dog ran halfway out of the barn woofing before he came back? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Yeah, why would he do that? Well, I must have done something to create it. Something to create it, or you did not do something to prevent it? That's what I mean. I've done something to allow it to happen. And so then what would you do? I would work every day on fixing it. And how would you fix it? So he runs out the oh, barn without listening. my permission. What's he doing when he runs out? He's supposed to be on his barrel or something? He's supposed to be with you, right? Right. I didn't say yeah. he was on anything. Yeah. I said you were sitting in your chair and your dog was with you. Okay. Oh, we're back to that scenario. Suzanne says, I'm here and I see the bus coming. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the road. Get out of the road. I want to point out we did not say any names. <laughs> no, we did not. Um, okay, so he's supposed to be with me laying up on the ground. First thing I would do, because he's probably Now, did I say, did anybody with... hear me say laying on the well, ground? Well, sorry. In my mind, <clears throat> I'm envisioning this and Scout's right. usually laying down. So... I would go back to a leash to be able to control him at first, probably. I don't know. It depends. I mean, if I've let him get that. So, okay. Now I'm driving the bus and you set me up to drive it. If I let it get that far, I would go back to a leash rather than just using the e-collar. Unless I felt it was fair to just make it quick. So could you imagine what would happen if Mari, Roxy, Bear, or Callie did that to me? How pissed I'd be. Yeah. Now, sometimes people mm -hmm. treat their dogs like pock, potch. Mm -hmm. They pretend they don't hear. Mm -hmm. So they... Add things to it, add things to it, add things to it. To me, the bottom line is, is the same thing as heel. You know, heel is such a huge, m most understood, misunderstood word there ever was mm -hmm. in my world. Mm -hmm. Me, I always train my cow dogs to come behind, which meant walk behind me. Do not pass my legs. Mm -hmm. Whether it's me or my horse, they couldn't do it, or my four-wheeler. They could not pass me. There was no exceptions, you know? And I remember back in the time, like now, somebody's wanting to bring a dog to us to help us around livestock to be able to be around without eating right. livestock. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember a time when I kind of thought, because I didn't know nothing, and I assumed, I guess you could say, or I've been around maybe a trainer who wasn't as advanced in training as I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But I kind of assumed that if I went through a cow field, mm -hmm. my dog pretty much had to be on a leash or I had to be screaming at him. Oh, right. Yeah. And I finally figured out that, you know, I don't have to do either one. That's hot liquor will stay by my leg and yeah. we'll go on through the cow field. Yeah. So now, here recently, I've seen a really nice, I mean, a great, great cow dog training video. Not cow dog training video. A video of a guy with cows working cattle up in the mountains and I think, I don't even know, upstate New York somewhere, where it was. He sent his dog out to do stuff and then it was done. And then he told his dog, come behind. And he must have told that dog 10 times in, I don't know, a thousand yards or whatever. 
So that's where you would be if you were sitting in the barn hallway and your dog kept charging, charging, charging. It's because there's not a communication that's understandable by the dog that says, I'm not asking you to come back. I'm asking you not to leave. Right. And that's what gets people in trouble. Right. So now, if in your dog was trained, and I've seen cow dogs do this. I've done a little bit with mine, not a lot. But if your dog was trained to lay there against the door, okay, mm -hmm. lay, got mm -hmm. it? Lay against the door where your chair is, not in your chair, but against the door. And when you heard the car come in and you got out of your chair and walked out there to see what, what would, what should your dog do? Should not go with me unless I ask him Correct. to. Correct. He should stay there. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a thing that I think people, <clears throat> there's a difference, I feel. Asher and Jack, right? Yeah. Their dog, their problem was huge, Cardin to Mommy. And I said, well, that's easier than putting my socks on in the morning. Fix that problem. Yeah. But that problem's a lot different than like Bodie. Yep. I'm not throwing Suzanne in her bus now. Yeah. But it's a lot different than Bodie's problem. Yeah. Because of the fact that Bodie's problem, majority of the time, dogs like not just Bodie, but dogs like him. Me, if I had a dog in my house, I'm not going to throw Suzanne in her bus yet. If I had a dog in my house and somebody came to the door and they barked, like Trin used to do, she only barked if Jody came home mm -hmm. or Laura. Mm -hmm. You could come up the driveway and clean my house out. Mm -hmm. She would lick you and tell you hi. She only barked Jody and Laura come out. I tell her quiet, she shut up. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't my dog, but she shut up because she knew the rules mm -hmm. where you got to shut up. But the rules were embedded in her head. <clears throat> the day Suzanne and I worked with Bodie a lot with a ball. I think it was a great time. And I, I think that Suzanne kind of realized some of what the problem was. And I opened her on how to fix the problem now. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with the dog that uh, runs out of the barn door and barks, or in the house and barks, and doesn't respect your be good thing is not understanding the rules mm -hmm. and the consequences. Because I guarantee you, uh, <clears throat> for me, if I tried to train a dog that ran out of the barn all the time with a treat, mm -hmm. I'd probably run out of treats. Mm -hmm. Because, especially with my dogs, it was like Callie, she'd be like, I don't want your treat anyway, I just want to go see who's here. Bear, he would stay there until he probably died, I don't know. And I think that a lot of times people misunderstand dogs in training is if you put all of that up front training in them, it's there till they die. Yeah. You know, it's just like me, like you a scout. If you let him run out the barn door now 10 times and you was bitching at him, all you got to do is lay law down one time sternly and he'd be like, okay, I'm good now. I'm Correct. not going to do it yeah, no more. That happened the other night because <clears throat> we do pretty well if someone comes to the door, but the other day I was sleeping because I had a headache and... He answered the door, and Scout wasn't listening to him. And he kind of ignored the person at the door for a second and was like, no, I'm serious. Get away from the door. And Scout was like, oh, okay, all right. And it's just because they just assume yes. that it's Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to listen Even to Tilly that. the other day, I had her on a leash, and I was taking her potty, and she woofed at someone who was coming up from behind us. And I said, ah. And she sat down and woofed at him. <laughs> I was like, not exactly what I meant. But I knew it was my fault. And I just kept training on her until <clears throat> she quit. And then told her good. But it was funny because I am like pretty good at reacting quickly when a dog makes a mistake now. But I said, ah. And she's like, oh. She said, sit. And I was listening. She continued barking because she didn't know I was saying shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of difference with all the training on this stuff. But. Like Suzanne with Bodie and you with Scout in the barn, I think that if you, if Suzanne was sitting on her couch and Bodie was laying on his bed and somebody came up the driveway 
If Bodie couldn't get up and leave, he couldn't get up and leave. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He can't leave because there's a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go do this with Rock Hole, too. Hopefully here yeah. next day or two. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe tomorrow we might bust over by Suzanne and aggravate her and go by Rocco's house and see who we can find. That's a good plan. Go by, what's his name? Uh, the little white dog was up the park the other day. <sighs> we got to go by his house some evening, though, when they have him out. Remember the mean little dog was here? He was like six years old, white with little red speckles. Suzanne, I don't know. Hmm. Remember we went to their house once up here in Sherwood or somewhere? Oh, Theo? No. The one lived around the corner from Theo. I think. I don't know. Yeah, the little white dog. We went to her house, walked around, couldn't find no dogs. Sadie? No. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> Brett, you got any questions? Uh, the only comment is Kay saying, I think Marvin's saying Bianca up to throw her under the bus. I hated that. <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne said Charlie. No. The little white dog. Uh, it looks like <laughs> little a little stock, white dog. little stock dog. I mean, it's like this big or something. You know, you know, I know who told me. Come here, so damn mean on leash. <sighs> Couldn't be with dogs. We put him up. Man, you went up there and walked around with him at your house, or was it me and Suzanne? Oh, I didn't mean you. I, had, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is it a little white dog or is well, it a medium white dog? Mm, what kind of dog? White dog. Looks about the <laughs> size of Mari or Roxy, maybe. He was just up there this day in Sherwood last Wednesday <sighs> when her stalker was there. Or no. Oh, Brady. Yeah. Brady. He's not really white. Anyway. Like cream I said, <laughs> But we need to go by his house, too. Uh, yeah, we got a list yeah. of dogs we need to go yeah. see. All right. So uh, I think we'll bail. We're good. Brett, you got anything? Suzanne just said Brady, and that's it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Good job, Suzanne. Glad somebody <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. Suzanne should, because she's like my shadow. Yeah, I didn't go to that lesson at your house, at their house. Though, really? So, no, it wasn't me. Oh, must have been Suzanne. Maybe that's why she knew what I was talking about, because <laughs> she was there. So, Brett, you got anything else? You got anything, Bianca? Nope. So, we want to thank everybody for coming. And, Donna, make sure we get together and we'll try to figure out a clinic over your neck of the woods. And then, I'm serious, I'm going to go to Ohio, I think, in June. And then April 17th is the Barrel Games. Yes, April 17th is the Barrel Games. It's going to be a fundraiser for somebody. Am I going to Iho Ohio? No. <laughs> no. It'll be me and me. Unless Jody wants to go. But I think that we got to figure out the barrel games to make it maybe a little longer. Well, yeah, we'll have all day Sunday. I know, but I mean, last time it went pretty quick, you know what I mean? We'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Good Have night. a good weekend. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search.